I would describe it as uh, trying to, 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 to catch all the different facets of the music of In Flames. There, I mean, it's a music with a lot of darkness in. It's also music with a lot of full-on partying. It's, it's very dynamic. And that's what we are trying to do with the show, to create a very dynamic lighting show and, and find all the marks and the blackouts and, and, and to get it really in your face. That's, that's the whole idea of the lighting design. And then. For this tour now, we try to fit some more theatrical elements that we had before. We have a see-through backdrop, for example, that, that, that is new. And, of course, again, using pixel mapping that's been used before. I saw them on a, on a fair somewhere, on the Plaza Fair. Um, and then, and then, in the same time, actually, a Swedish the, the company Woodlight that supplies our gear, they invested in the magic panel. So it was um, it was near to choose them, so to say, because they already owned a few of them, and then they invested in some more for for this for this tour here. Um, but I wanted something that was able to pixel map, that had a good output, uh, and that you could basically. I'm not a big fan of using a lot of instruments. I like to have a lot of one type and, and get something out like the whole roof we have here. When you put that on, it's, it's very clean in one way. Um, and I, I wanted, I, I, I was already convinced about the, the flare and the Solaris flare. I saw them working on the Eurovision in, in Malmö in 2013 and it was just insanely bright and everything you need for, for a show like this basically really good colors and they are even in, in colors as well and uh, and you are able to use them as a atomic or whatever strobe and they they will do a really good job like that in all colors from white to whatever but you can also do some fields and stuff in them i mean there's a million million lead products that can do some flickering around whatever but most of them cannot do a proper white in high intensity and this can actually do a proper white in high intensity so that was that was the big deal for me and then i wanted a moving light that could work together with the flare uh, and uh, since woodlight then invested in these ones it was very close to, to choose them actually and i think they work great together it's 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 a nice couple <laughs> We use video to control all the lights. Uh, so basically, I would say that half of the output from the lights is video, and half of it is conventional programming, so to say. Uh, and one of the reasons for us to use video, one of the biggest reasons is, is um, because it, it gives us the possibility to achieve very random effects and very like shaking stuff or, or waving through the whole rig, like f flashing through the whole rig. Of course, you could do that while programming as well, conventional style, but it would take you ages to do similar effects that you can achieve very fast with, with video. Yeah, basically, we're using the Magic Panel 602 from Ariton and the Solaris Flare from Company NA, TMB. Uh, and we are using them in full channel mode. So I think the Magic Panel is around 160 channels each and, and the Flare is 56 channels or something. And that means that we can, we can control each pixel of the light. So we have done a pixel mapping in a hypnotizer. So, so the desk is actually controlling a hypnotizer behind the stage. And then, it's, if you look at it, it's like a layout with all the lights on, on a square of video. The pixel mapping actually reads the color information from the video we, we play out and sends that via Artnet back to the console. And here we merge it together with the, with the information sent from the Grand MA. So what comes out on MA2 net to the MPUs and to the nodes in the rig is a merge of Artnet from Hypnotizer and the console. And then, uh, and then we control everything with our MA net. But we are doing the merging in the console. 
So, and this information that comes from the hypnotizer is only RGB, RGB white. So it's no dimmer information or pan tilt information or something like that. It just sends on the on the color channels of the fixture. So that's the only thing that is patched in 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 the in the hypnotizer. I, th I think that's basically the biggest advantage. I would say to to be able to you can mix between video regular strobing, bumping, flashing, it gives you a lot of different tools. In, but I would say I don't use it as video here, I use it as a second effect generator for the console, basically, rather than... It's not like we are writing names in the rig or have jumping balls or something. It's, it's, it's a second effect generator. But what we are looking at here now is the, our floor magic panels. And this is the dollies in the back with the Solaris flare, so the rectangular thing is the Solaris flare and the square thing here is the the dollies in the back and, and uh, these four things here is the color force used for the drummer um, so that's basically how it looks and, the, and, and this is uh, overlay on the output image from the from the hypnotizer so if you can imagine that there is a video file playing here and this stuff is laying on top and just reading the color information so that's basically what we have. We have the whole rig laid out as a plot on top of a, of a film. <laughs> Simple as that, in theory. <laughs> but the downside with doing and creating a system like this is that you, it, it really takes off in control channels. So I think we are around 17,000 channels here, which of course puts some... <coughs> You need some MPU stuff and, and expansion to, to get it working properly. In the back, in the very far back upstage, we have eight dollies um, that is configured with the Solaris flares, Sharpies and four lights, and they can move up and down in, in the Kinesis system. In front of that, we have uh, we also have a bunch of VL3500s on the floor. Uh, in front of that we have this see-through backdrop thing that is, uh, <coughs> is made by a Swedish uh, artist guy that created that in his home, <laughs> basically. Uh, <coughs> and then in front of all that, 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 uh, that see-through backdrop is a kabuki drop, so that will go down in the show. In front of that is, is three lines. Each line is four trusses of magic panels, so it's in total 12, 12 trusses of magic panel. And it's um, hanging in a kinesis system as well. Yeah, and then we have some eight lights in the front. We have ladders on the side with uh, Sharpie washes. We also have Sharpie washes in the, in the pre-rig truss for all the moving trusses. Um, and then we have side trusses, which are doing side lights configured with uh, with Sharpie washes as well, ETC pars and, and flares. So it's it's basically a little box with a roof that can come down, <laughs> full of lights. We have a close collaboration with the with the former former LD of Inflames, Morgan Brown, with Brown's Blend in Stockholm, which is a very good friend of mine, and he stocks a lot of hypnotizers and it also gives me great support and I also think the hypnotizer is the per perfect tool for for doing this it's I mean it's not once you are set up it's not very advanced it's not an advanced exact technology to do this what we are doing here really and it and the hypnotizer is good in quick quick and dirty programming and I, I think it's perfect tool for that We wanted to give it a shot to do everything that way because it, it, it opens doors to do stuff definitely to have the whole backbone of the show like stacks and stuff controlled by timecode. You can focus on other stuff, you can put a lot of energy into other things and I think for me I, I, I actually like this way of working. I'm not a guy that likes to stand behind a console and watch it do the whole show by itself but it makes me do other stuff that I might have haven't been able to do before because it's pretty fast <laughs> all of it and also if you get in some kind of situation when something breaks down and, and stuff like that at least the show is running and also I'm not the only one who can execute this show somebody else could do it tomorrow
which I see as a as a good thing as well. That it's not only down to one person to to sort it out in the right way. So, so anyway, we decided to go for 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 time code. So I started off also with the new album. We, me and Tom, the sound engineer, we started to attach codes, time code to everything, and get it into the backtrack system. And then I start. I actually start at home in my computer just with a with a with a music program <clears throat> and um, uh, yeah <laughs> let's continue I start off with a mu music program at home and I just put in markers for cues uh, which I then export as time basically just times uh, and put that into the Grand MA programming. So I start to create create uh, skeleton queue lists, which are coded. That's basically the workflow. Um, then I move into to the Vusevig studio in Stockholm uh, and sit there for a while, sort out all the patching, all the... I was there for one and a half week, something like that. And then uh, and then we did a rehearsal, we did uh, some club shows before this with some less gear, but I still programmed on the same show, show file, so to say. So I was there with a bunch of equipment for a little while and, and did all that, finished up the club show programming and, and all that. But in total, the pre-production time for this tour was about three weeks, maybe, for programming and coding and all this, all this stuff. But then we have put in much more songs than we play. I think we put in f about 40 songs or something that is in the... Because you never know when it might come up and you need it. And then at least we have this skeleton queue list that you can work on pretty, pretty fast. So. <laughs> Thank you.